you know, if you have somebody in your life that just wants to pick up and play, um, this is not a bad choice. Shizzle, my nizzle, did you see them get that gold nizzle? No, wait, I'm, I'm not Snoop Dogg. Hey, deadheads, welcome back to the channel. Or welcome for the first time, new deadheads. Today, we're gonna do an unboxing and first impressions video of the M25 from our friends over at SJ Gam. Um, we have been reviewing quite other handhelds uh, in the last couple of months, the uh, M17, 18, 19, and now the M25. So stay tuned, let's take a look at it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that link button so you never miss an episode. But let's get into this and let's start this uh, unboxing and review. All right, Deadhead, so we're back with yet another SG Jam. This company has kind of just begun to pump out different um, products. You know, we first saw the M17 come out about a year ago, and that thing was under the radar, but there was a huge community that kind of lifted that, that machine up and just really kind of kept pumping into it. Then we saw the R43 Pro or the M18 that came out, which we found to be very favorable. It was kind of surprising with its, you know, huge butt hump. Uh, then we had the M19, which had the Cyclops, which we liked quite a bit. It's like they're getting better every time. We had that terrible M7, but remember, they didn't put their logo on that. So I think they, they were wise to the fact. But now we have this M25 and Deadheads. This, this just might be maybe the most premium, best um, e-waste that they have put out. Let's take a look. Let's find out. All right, so let's go over the screen specs here. So this has a 4.3 inch HD screen. Um, I'm pretty confident this is the same screen that we saw in the, uh, the M18. Um, so I'm, gonna, I'm curious to see if that's what it is, but it is a 4.3 HD screen. We are running MULX, so I'm expecting this to have the same sort of software setup we've seen before. We do have the quad core Cortex A55, so I expect this to be a 3326. Uh, we have total system memory of four gigs, a storage capacity of 64. And again, it's 480 by 272, a 3000 milliamp battery. And so we'll see, again, this is the M25 um, that is mimicking the PlayStation Portal, which I think it's trying to look at. Uh, but let's get this thing, the, the box is pretty nice, but let's, let's open this box and let's see what's inside. Been looking forward to this. This one took a little longer to get. Um, okay, so now we have our, our unit here. Let's get this guy out of here. And um, Wow, okay. Um, so here's our manual. You know, our typical manual. Dead Fred likes to look at the manual. This looks just like all the other manuals. 3000 milliamp hour, supports 128 gig card. I bet it'll go higher than that. 4.3 PSP support in 64. Should be the 3326. Um, it could be the 3566. I don't know. Remember, we were very surprised by the uh, M18. So we'll probably open this guy up and see what's under the hood just to, to verify. But there you go right there for the functions. Um, we do have our USB A to C. So this looks like a typical charger and no screen protector. Come on, guys. Let's try to get a screen protector. There's nothing else in there. It's an awfully big box, but um here's the unit here maybe i've got a screen protector pre-applied and voila let's zoom in and take a look at this unit here and see what we think and first uh, impressions this thing feels very wide but it, it feels good my thumbs are falling like just perfect in line there we do have clicky switch buttons we do have the sticks at the bottom so i really do like that that's really nice sticks feel good they look and pretty pretty kind of clicky i'd say these are pretty much the same that we saw on the uh the m18 uh or the let's see how it looks compared to the the uh the m19 let's see here yeah i'm gonna say it's pretty much the same the same stick as the is the m19 uh looks like they're using the same part so same switch style stick you know nothing super fancy or particularly great about it um may or may not be hall sensor i don't know um, let's look at these buttons and wow, these are, these are big. I like that. Okay. So the buttons are nice. 
yeah, I like the buttons. They have good travel distance. Uh, look at the curvature there. That, that's pretty nice. This this whole handheld, this portal style, this this just feels really, really good. And this thing is light. It's not it's not heavy at all. Although um, I hope that doesn't mean it's like really cheaply made, but we'll see as we, we get into this. But yeah, it feels really nice. These buttons are nice. Gotta say, I like the buttons. And then we have uh, vo maybe volume or it could trick us just like in the V10. We have plus and minus. We have our start and select. And then this, this D-pad. This is a big fat D-pad. It reminds me of the D-pad on that D35 Plus. I don't know if it's going to be terrible. Ultimately, if this is going to be a good D-pad, it looks different than... Yeah, the D-pad on the M19. Man, dog hair everywhere. Um, I liked this D-pad. This M19 is, is really nice, guys. I mean, this thing is, is a real, I think, one of those hidden gems out there. Um, but yeah, I... Okay, I'm going to say oh, right off the bat, I like that D-pad better. I don't know why we went with a different D-pad. This one is, it feels like it's going to have, it feels loose and like it may have a lot of false diagonals. So I don't know. We'll see. Now these, these shoulder buttons are loud. Wow, they're very loud. Um, that's not... It's kind of sticking so that's not a great quality control sign there but they feel okay again the positioning of my thumbs right here feels so good and natural with this curved handle uh this thing isn't going to need a grip man I, I really would like to see more uh of this shape man let's let's see something from ambernet come out with this shape uh because yeah this this is this is nice if we could get an r uh, 3588 or the t820 uh something that's going to play ps2 and gamecube um and maybe even some Wii. So yeah. And of course Portmaster. Um, so those sticks feel good. Let's take a look at our IO here. Um, and so we do have I oh, got it upside down here. So it looks like it has the on off button. I, I really am kind of appreciating that. I'm kind of getting to the point where I like that. Looks like we have an HDMI out. We have a headphone jack. We have a TF slot. So one card again. We have our DC in. So not a lot of I.O. there uh, on the back here. Um, looks like we have little vent holes here uh, made in China. Not much going on there. And of course, this has, you know, th this looks like it should be able to. I don't know if it'll stand on its own or not. Not not really going to stand. So I wouldn't expect that. Um, but yeah, there's there's the handheld that's that's an overview so let's fire this guy up and let's see what this this version of software looks like which i'm not expecting it to be much different than what we've seen already so there we go we're loading up we should see an m25 screen nice little light there that's kind of nice little tiny rgb lights MU Elec is loading. So yeah, this is this is very familiar. I hope we can get some custom firmware going. I hope the developer will help us. Looks like we don't have a lot of battery. I may have to uh, to charge this thing, stop filming. But yeah, this is this is very familiar, guys. This looks just like exactly like what we've been seeing, which is not a bad thing, you know. I mean, there is a segment of the population that I think that can really benefit from. Um, having uh just plug and play go games as we take a look here at this software list looks like it's pretty well scraped that's a shame there's only those games on here we don't have more ds games on here um nes nes hd these are always like the hd ones the super plumber so we got some wacky games in here again some um hacks and stuff kind of up in this it's not going to be again i always recommend that you um you know you build your own rom list put your own sd card in here this is probably not a very good sd card uh this looks like another hack i thought maybe it was going to be um a regular game as we play this but yeah this is uh very much very familiar I'm expecting not to have, let's see what any of the buttons do, plus and minus. So yeah, luckily that is volume, unlike our, our pal kitty friends. And do we have a menu? All right, not seeing a menu. 
Maybe it's the two sticks together. No. Okay, there we go. Oh, there's that. Yeah, there's that menu. So um, there's been a lot of work on M17, M18, M M19. So I'm going to find out and see if I can get some kind of custom firmware loaded on this guy. Um, but let's just play through a couple of things here and just see how these controls work. As I fall all the way down. So again, you're kind of locked into the the screen ratio but it, this looks good i mean again you know this thing's coming in under 60 dollars for this nice big screen if i can get the controls here yeah this d-pad i'm not loving the d-pad but let's see let's see okay yeah it's hardwired this is not going to be real analog sticks so sticks fine though so I can play with the stick to make up for the D-pad. Guys, I don't, SJGAM, why, why didn't we go with this D-pad, man? You know, that's that's a criticism. You should have went with this D-pad. I don't, I don't understand. Don't, you know, when you have something that works good, don't mess it up. Um, but yeah, we can do it here with the, with the stick here. Now, my prediction is both sticks are hardwired together like before this isn't a real two two dual stick so it's more for show and look to make this thing mimic you know the uh the look that we would have of the ps portal so this is playing fine uh and i imagine that this is going to operate and play uh pretty much like we've seen in the m19 and the m18 so don't really expect um we're going to get a whole lot of of difference here what's other config let's see what that oops i don't know aspect ratio oh look at that guys i don't remember that i'll have to go back and look and see if if that's available but that's kind of good we can go in and change the as yeah that looks better so kind of like that they at least did that you know again if you have a cousin a friend a brother somebody that you know has a fond memory of these games but was never a huge gamer and is not going to do like most of us and get into tinker with these things and really know about the opportunity there they just want to play some old games this is a pretty good selection i mean sj gam i think is giving people a um, decent option at this you know very low end e-west e e-waste territory now, R36S is still ultimately going to be better, but that, that is because you can go in and do some custom firmware. You are going to be able to do a lot of stuff, but if, if this is for somebody that just you know is not going to do that, they don't want to do that, they don't want to mess with downloading or settings, they just want to you know pop a game in and play, I, I think this brand is becoming the go-to for that. Uh, I certainly feel like that is the territory that they're going to be in. Uh, let's see, let's pop in some Dreamcast and see what that looks like. He loads up some, some crazy taxi. I remember when this game first came out and um, me and my brother were so excited for this. Um, because we loved this, this game at the arcade and we had launched a Dreamcast site called, uh, first it was called uh, Katana Edge because Katana was the code name of the Dreamcast as it was being developed. And then we ended up calling it dcswirl.com. So first I want to see is if I can change. See, there's no aspect ratio here. So, uh, and you wouldn't want to change it anyways. But that's interesting to know. The thing sounds pretty good. It's got down firing speaker, one speaker coming out of this side. I guess backfiring actually. It's kind of loud, uh, but at least... At least we do have that there. But I wanted to see how how these sticks do, how it feels to use these again. And we'll try some N64 as we wrap up this uh, first look and impressions review. This, this looks, yeah, this looks like what I would expect. Figure out how they got the controls set up here. Here we go. 
So they do got the trigger. It's definitely digital. It's not an analog trigger. I don't know if the game even has analog trigger anyways. Uh, but yeah, this, this is pretty good. This feels good, okay? Holding this and controlling this. I, I like this form factor. So the one positive here I'm going to say is I'd like to see this, this shell. I'd like to see some other companies explore this. Uh, and of course, I'm not really actually trying to play here. I'm trying to think. But I wouldn't mind seeing this explored in a more better, well done. If you know Max, Max Zhao, um, look at it, man. Let's let's see what you can do with something like this. Let's get uh, an, a T820 in one of these, and let's uh, get this thing out at 140 or less. And let's, man, let's have a nice little PS Portal looking thing. Um, but yeah, it's playing Dreamcast fine. But let's wrap up this first look impressions. Uh, video and review of this M25 as we take a look at some N64. All right, so as we load up some N64 Cruising USA, what do I think about this? I've got to say that I'm intrigued. One of the reasons that I'm really um, continuing to showcase this brand is because the community out there is really rallying around it. If you guys saw me on the podcast, again, shout out to Retro Handhelds for inviting me to the podcast this week. If you saw that, you know, you heard me say that sometimes terrible hardware becomes awesome because of awesome people and also awesome support. And we've got some really cool guys out there like Lord Ains, who is out there just hacking away, trying to make these things better. We've got Hack Around. We've got just a big community of people who are looking to um, improve these systems. Our buddy Elios X and his channel and what he's doing. So, you know, it's really cool. I really want to encourage more competition and I really want to see uh, us have more choices, um, especially over here in the U.S. And so I really am glad to see that something like this is, is out there. Let's see what the control setup is. There we go. Okay, so we do have the sticks and yeah this feels good this reminds me of the m19 you know the m19 played in 64 about the same i think we used the same game for our footage but if i was going to play some n64 i like this this bigger screen this bigger wide screen um you know this is this is this game is not necessarily hard to run or easy it's somewhere in the middle of n64 uh emulation as as i very terribly drive here but i think it's you know it's doing an adequate job uh this thing's got to come in under 50 dollars. they got to get this price down you know you can get the m18 now regularly or the r43 pro for under 50 the m19 starting to come down so after this has been out a few months it'll reach that under 50 dollar price and this this thing is it's is going to be a good buy again my recommendation for this is going to be for someone that has no intention of tinkering they don't want to mess with settings they don't want to do all that they're not a hardcore gamer they just want to relive every once in a while some of their past they just want to pick up a game and play and there's a large segment of people and their you know gen the millennials that um, i think would appreciate this that haven't been reached yet i think our loving handheld hobby is only going to continue to get bigger and bigger and so i think really we're going to need more options i love what amber nick does that is kind of giving both options with the stock um, firmware, but also that second slot and that ability to switch it out and use custom firmware. That's the best of both worlds. But guys, you know, if you have somebody in your life that just wants to pick up and play, um, this is not a bad choice. And out of what SJGAM has been releasing, I think the M19 currently is still gonna be the one that I would pick over all the releases they've had so far. But this one, this one has me intrigued. Um, I like this better than the R43. I think this, this shape and this comfortability, you know, uh, it just, it feels good to hold and everything. So I would prefer that. Um, this is not pocketable at all, and it's not for that. But you know, at home, portability, um, it's going to be just good. You don't have to put a grip on it. it it's just, it feels good in the shape and the hand. Um, not a lot of not a lot of rattle, so quality control in this thing is, is, is pretty good. Um, the biggest criticism, the D-pad. I wish they would have kept the D-pad they put on the, um, the M19. Um, but other than that, guys, I'm going to say that if you understand what you're getting, um, 
you're getting a pretty good product. Um, this is, you know, in that territory where S, SG, SG Jam, S, whatever, SJ Gam can really continue to improve their quality control and actually step up into just a little bit better um, CPUs and open up the software so we can have that alternative for custom firmware, support the development team. We're going to have some good stuff going. So guys, let me know what you think. Leave me a comment. Let me know if you thought that this thing looks intriguing to you. Is this something that you would you know, share with a friend or somebody that wants to just pick up and play? Uh, or do you think this is just you know, another massive uh, e-waste? I want to know what you guys think. Um, anyways, this has been Dead Fred. Take care of your loved ones out there. Tomorrow's never promised. Make sure you love your loved ones. We'll see you next time. Dead Fred out. Thank <laughs> you.